Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So uh, turns out feedback works really, really well. So, oops, you bring us to 220 seconds into this mission. All right, and we'll just kind of replay it. So that's when we tell it to start turning. We tell it to turn 90 degrees, and I think you'll like this. All right, so. Uh, we stop real nicely and slightly overshoot. So that's really good. Uh, it's good to watch this from the vertical position too. So let's go back to 220, look at it from here. And you'll see that it's not really moving too much in the vertical direction either. All right. And so if we go to this model and look at those two scopes, well, there's the... Um, the yaw rotation, and I think that's really, really good. We can kind of zoom in on it and kind of see it up close. A little bit of an overshoot, which we noticed from the video. So that's yaw. And then on the vertical position right here, we're seeing that we're completely nailing it. So anyways, I'm very happy with this. Um, and now I want to just kind of take you through how, how we got here. So I think I'll kind of bring up the model without the modifications that include feedback. All right. So I've talked in previous videos so much like I'm I wouldn't say gleefully showing this, but I'll just say that 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 I, I wanted to continue to remind you that we're not employing feedback as we move through this, but that we do have the intention to do it. And that I also wanted through these videos to just show that your theoretical kind of understanding of kind of a quadcopter and the aerodynamics, the mechanics, perhaps even the electronics, um, should, I, in my opinion, should kind of lead you. All right. And that I, I, I believe feedback's a great kind of approach in linear control theory, which is kind of where all this came from, uh, is essential to make all these things work. And um, I don't want to exactly call it cleanup, but I, I'd say that the things that you just can't grasp theoretically, you know, we're very fortunate to have all this, uh, I'll call, um, all this wisdom that's been developed in, in crafting feed, con feedback control algorithms. And, and in this example, you know, we're going to rely quite a bit on the PID uh, uh, feedback approach. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and kind of get this one going. All right. All right. And so we employ feedback by introducing it into the subsystem. Just, all right. And so we'll go in here. And all we've done so far is we basically put this in there. Right. And the one that we need to correct is what I call the torque Z. All right. This torque Z is coming out here. It's feeding these two blocks, which pr process kind of the requested torque and, and show how it will um, contribute into the thrust because, because pretty much everything has to go through thrust. And once we get to those actual propulsion units, they're all speed controllers, essentially speeding, you know, defining the speed of the propeller to give the thrust that's been kind of requested. So anyways, so that that's kind of our, our constraint that we work with. All right, so let's get a bus selector. All right. Now in this model, I'm going to address something that we talked about before, All right? So this model will recall kind of goes up. I could show you the animation. You'll just kind of see that it continues to rotate. It doesn't really stop. You know, the, the, this does not employ the feedback which we're about to put in. Now, the other thing that kind of bugged me about this, and I'm going to you know, zoom in in kind of this X direction. So we really notice what's going on here is I wouldn't even call this overshoot. I'd just say, hey, at least it goes in the appropriate direction. That's where my optimism came from, that if I, I can apply a torque that will make it move, but it certainly led to way too much movement, all right? And I don't call it overshoot because it's ultimately unstable and it's, it's incorrect, all right? And so in this massive amount of overshoot, we're seeing, one, you know, we ask for 90 degrees. It does one two, three, four, in a matter of 30 seconds, it, it does four rotations, all right? And so 
what I want to also address, this is an important thing, is the idea that if I'm looking at just you know the roll pitch and yaw angles, well those are constrained to you know minus 180 to 180 degrees. And again, I don't want it to be even close to that amount of error, but the, the idea that we could be kind of flirting with it is just wrong. You know, that, that this is not a real discontinuity. This is just a reset of the signal uh, because we went past the minus 180 to 180 window. All right. And so uh, we're, we're not even going to use this in our, our feedback control. All right. So anyways, I think that'll make sense if we get into this. All right. So it's going to box zoom down here. Oops. So I got my bus selector on the feedback. I double click on this. I see the things that we're, we're measuring from the vehicle. And I'm saying we're not going to use this. Still a good thing to know, you know, and it doesn't cost us much to carry it along. But we're going to go to the angular velocity. All right. Now, angular velocity is a three component, three dimensional vector. And so we're going to grab. the Z component, which is aligned with the yaw rotation axis, right? And that that will be the third element, okay? And so here's the basic idea to get a continuous measurement on the, the yaw uh, rotation angle is simply integrate the angular velocity in Z, okay? And we're gonna just kind of rely on, you know, our convention, we chose the initial orientation to be a, Z, a zero rotation on yaw. And so that initial conditions lined up for what we want to do. All right. So let's hit the space bar and we're going to use this. And essentially the feedbacks can be based on what we want to happen coming out of this signal, comparing with this. All right. And so I'm going to click on this. Now this is a RZ already. Right, so this is not about orientation, but it is a three component, I'll say signal, right? And it's being used to do calculations and employ physics. And, you know, we designed it this way that, that what it's really carrying is not only, you know, that RZ angle, but also its first and second derivatives. And so this time the selector block needs to choose the first component, right? And so now we'll, oops. Click on the background. Type in sum, and we'll get one of these. All right. And we'll compare the two, which means we'll subtract off the feedback. And that that's the error in angular rotation. And that's what PIDs love to deal with. Oops. P I D. I take the second one right there. All right. And I'm not too interested in that scope measurement right now. But what we're going to do is update kind of the the uh, Z torque calculation to include this uh, this feedback. And so we'll take that. We'll add these two pieces. Right. And that this component right here, which we uh, introduced in the previous video, is simply taking, I'll call it that ZZ inertia and multiplying it by the angular acceleration, um, I'd say um, proposed by our, our command signal. Right. So this is our, again, our very classic feed forward algorithm for for the required torque. And I'll just say it didn't work that well. You know, and maybe it didn't work that well because we really couldn't implement it through these two blocks. But the previous video was really about introducing these blocks to convert torque into thrust adjustments. And what was promising was, well, we're kind of getting things moving in the appropriate direction, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and, uh, you know, what was disappointing was it didn't work that well. But, but there was this promising thing, and I've already kind of let you in on the, the fact that what we're doing now works pretty well. All right. So anyways, this torque Z 
you recall, kind of there are um, kind of on the, the X beam, the propellers spin this way, and the Y beam, they spin the opposite way. So that's why we had two of these. Anyways, I think we kind of structurally have it right now. But what we now need to do is to tune this, all right? And so the, you know, the basic idea of the PID algorithm, you know, if you like working in this kind of S domain, well, that it's as simple as what we're looking at right there, uh, that the four parameters are KP, KI, KD, and then this thing called N. And in a way, people like to say, well, N is essentially a low-pass filter. I'll say it's a parameter that kind of defines something that's a low-pass filter. But what more importantly, what it does is it allows us to take kind of smooth derivatives, right? And so... Um, so it's a parameter, KP, KI, KD, uh, that's kind of going to be tuned just like the other three, right? So anyways, when we click on tune, you know, I demo this a lot. I think it's a wonderful tool. Um, but we'll see that it's kind of the basic step is it's linearizing the system. And what we run into on this model is it can't linearize it. Plant cannot be linearized. Use the plant menu to create or whatever. Well, not exactly sure why that happened, you know, and a uh, number of ways I might fix it. Um, but the one I chose is this one called relinearize, right? And I'll just say that the default kind of um, snapshot, that's a word they'll use, but, you know, basically you choose a point in time and you measure the state of the system and you essentially run it through. I'll call it the state space model, and you can kind of get what we call a linear response to the system. Well, you know, the operational states in this case are mostly kind of what's the vehicle doing with regard to, you know, X, Y, Z, as well as its rotation, as well as what are the propellers doing. You know, that, you know, it's, it's those things and their derivatives that define state. All right. So anyways, we're going to go to 219, and we're going to click on linearize, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I'm going to edit out probably the next two minutes or so as it reruns this entire simulation. And there we are. Isn't that cool? So anyways, it was able to linearize at 219 seconds, and it came up with a nicely designed PID control algorithm. And these are the parameters it came up with, and these are the metrics. Yeah, so a little bit of overshoot, maybe more than I want. But um, in general, I think I'm pretty happy with this. And so now I update the block, and I hit that to close that, and I got those new numbers in there right now. And so that quickly, we actually fixed the yaw problem. We'll see that in these scopes right here. So as it kind of finishes up, we'll watch the measurement on the yaw. So you'll see that we did fix it. Uh, we have not fixed the Z yet. And so you can see kind of that drift upward is still there. And so this time, um, you know, this last piece is that we're going to go into our feedback, select position as well. I'm going to move it up to the top port, so it's kind of coming out right there. And again, we'll get a selector. Let's grab one of these since it's already on the third component. And we'll do pretty much the same thing we did here, too. All right. And this time we're kind of operating off of the trajectory. We'll set up the same kind of feedback. And I'll get a PID. Can get a brand new one. I could use this, but I want to just kind of show uh, more of an out of the box experience. It works pretty well. All right, and I think I'm really doing is kind of making some room here, All right? And so we're going to again add the feed forward and feed back. And I don't like all these lines crossing, so I'll kind of clean this up soon. And um, just kind of comment, you know, as I kind of work through this, you know, we're, we're, we're adding more and more, I'll say, you know, kind of feedback approaches. We're kind of using something to handle something messy 
and it is amazing how well PIDs work at that. But as uh, yeah, and again, I'm speculating a little bit. As I kind of brought some of these in, sometimes you find the PIDs can fight against each other, and and throwing this tuning kind of led to something that, that didn't work real well for me. But what I you know kind of reasoned it to was well, I don't my my requirements are simple, <laughs> you know, and that. If it takes like five seconds for it to get the right Z adjustment because maybe the wind blew and kind of pushed it up too far, you know, I'm kind of okay with it. And so I, I just kind of put in my own numbers and it, it ended up working out pretty well. And so I'll put in KP equal to 1,000, KD equal to 100. Uh, avoided kind of the, the, I'll say the rigorous, probably uh, intense fine tuning that the optimizer does. And I got all this to work pretty well. So it's just kind of, Watch our Z this time. I'll just hit run from here. It doesn't really take two or three minutes, but I think it probably takes like 45 seconds or so. So again, I'll, I'm going to keep my mouth <laughs> shut as we watch this. So let's hit run. Okay, here we are after it's reached its vertical position. Again, I'll keep my mouth shut for, let's say, 30 or 45 seconds. <sighs> So anyways, you're seeing that we're nailing it on the Z position. And let's bring up the yaw, and then we're doing quite well there too. And we've seen in previous videos that we can pitch and roll it very accurately uh, as well. So at this point, I'm highly confident in, uh, I'll say, the, the actions of my controls. I might do things in the future that make it a little bit more convenient. Maybe I'll even bring in like one of those joy, you know, those whatever game controllers or, or whatever, maybe real steering wheels and throttles and, and, you know, operate the model, you know, ultimately as a flight simulator with, with a real human beings kind of acting as pilots. But, but there, obviously we can take this in, in uh, multiple directions. So anyways, at this point, I think, uh, We've brought the feedback in properly. Uh, we kind of brought it in late, which in a way reflects my style of let's do as much as we can through our theoretical understanding before we, you know, kind of move into the the employment of of feedback methods to handle those things that that are really hard to understand. Or you know, so a, a, anyways, but um, I think things are proceeding pretty well. Um, We'll have a couple more videos to kind of wrap things up. And I, I think that this entire series, we'll see that it leads to kind of a template for quadcopters. And that uh, the next couple of videos will be kind of how we can kind of scale dimensions and, and, and see that we can get something up and running pretty quickly. So anyways, thank you.